So we've come out here, uh, up at mountains. Uh, this is it's what they call the Porcupine Hills, or they're not terribly hilly, or they're more mountain here anyway. But anyway, uh, we've just come up here, Richard and I, and we've been having a play about, and it's very interesting what we've noticed really. And one of the things we've noticed is that this P400 and the and the transmission, it's, it's, it's not right somehow. Uh, Richard's got a five litre supercharger with a six speed in it and he's managed to, to, to sort of very progressively um, get up some banks and, and, and some things on this there's gravel underneath here and, uh, and he's managed very well really just pootling about very progressive very smooth uh, and this hasn't had any of those sorts of abilities it's, it's, it's not good at all it's been up and down the gearbox and I've sort of got fed up with it now and I've sort of shoved it in second high box here because it's not, it won't respond properly, it keeps wanting to, it keeps wanting to change gear and then it does that thing where it sucks the power off you and we'll come round a bank and I very nearly didn't get up it um, because the, because it kept taking the power and then it, as soon as I Biff my foot into it to give it some momentum. It revved wildly and nothing happened, and, and a lot of noise and a little bit of wheel spin and, and nothing really. It was very uncomfortable sensation. And, and as soon as you backed off the throttle, because it was gone wild, and I mean 4,000, 5,000 RPM wild, as soon as you backed off the throttle again, it just took the power and sucked it away. And DSC was off. And it was in rock crawl mode which shouldn't be really letting anything sort of spin wildly out of control um, I have had most success here with a configurable terrain uh, response setting set to sort of a, a off-road sort of uh, sensitivity for wheel spin lock central differential and so on and so forth Richard's cruising along very merrily and you can't just see him now he's scooted off but He's cruising along very merrily in, in comfort mode and high range, or you know, in automatic, and he's getting places more smoothly than I could. So we have noticed, of course, that there has been an issue with the tyres. These tyres are definitely not as good as, as Richard's on this sort of terrain, and I'm sure that that's got something to do with it. And of course, if we lowered the pressures here, it'd be even worse than what it currently is. So uh, we, we did have a bit of a conversation the other day on the, the YouTube. YouTube channel on one of the videos about lowering pressures and that may be very meritorious in certain circumstances but this isn't one of them. So we've dropped pressure from 50 psi to 36 front and 42 rear I think. So Richard and I just had a bit of a conflab back there uh, and I'll show you some video while I'm uh, while I'm talking now about about the performance of the Land Rover against the Range Rover Sport, uh, and we both can, came to the conclusion that uh, the biggest issue was that uh, I mean the biggest issue is probably the tyres, but uh, the second biggest issue is that the torque power band for this is far too high, and it says in the book that it's at 2,000 RPM uh, maximum torque, but it seems that that's not the case. It does go, and you'll see as we're doing these donuts, it does, it does seem to move all right when you get it wound up a bit, but otherwise it really struggles. And it, and it seems as though there's just not enough torque to keep it going. Now, one of the things that Richard mentioned was that perhaps the torque is designed so that it can be used in low ratio, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, which naturally brings the engine revs up a bit, but, I don't like that and I'll say, because the wheels spin too much, the wheels are going too fast and in snow and ice you don't want them going fast, you want them going slow and you want torque to be able to pull you out at low revs, sort of 800 RPM, you want J 
gentle creeping sort of power and, and part of the difficulty with this snow is that you don't get that do you with a with a, something doing two and a half thousand rpm or three thousand rpm you're not you're not getting that steady and slow progression what you're getting is a big fat ball of nothing and um and that's part of the difficulty with this p400 i think now i have noticed there's been a couple of videos uh on on the youtube and and one of the gentlemen i forget his name just now but one of the gentlemen uh, has done a, a very nice video part one and part two of climbing a bank in rock crawl mode and uh, i've reached out to him and put a couple of comments on his thing about power sucking and he hasn't noticed it and he's got the diesel 240 so i'm wondering whether that uh that is a, a function that power pulling is a function of the p400 not any of the diesels i don't know yet i don't know that there's enough sort of data kicking about we do know that the power issue has been noticed in, in australia and by defender mods and i think they're in australia as well um so it was first noticeable on a video by ronnie dahl uh, who did a review of it last year and he was struggling to get it to go up a bank and he eventually used sand mode which is uh, obviously what you would want for a dune but he struggled and he could hear it in the other modes it was sucking that power but i've tried sand mode here as well as rock crawl like uh, like that chap did in his in his, his grassy bank video <laughs> I feel like was shooting on the jfk in the grassy bank video but, um so i think that is uh, i think that's a p400 issue and i think that's a bit of an issue i think it's a serious issue earlier on i, I just ordered one of tim's um, light bars for the for the rear of the back of the LR L6322 L663 the fin um, and I was going to fit that well I still am going to fit it I suppose but now I'm, I'm even more predisposed to the D5 because uh, like it was a serious issue it nearly had me upside down in a big hole um, and that would have been a very bad day for Firthy uh, now I suppose you could say some of that was to do with the tyres but the reality is that the tyres are only half the problem. If your tyres have got grip, that's one thing, but if they're not turning, that's another. That's another. Um, it's very pretty here, isn't it, with all the schnee in the trees. We're out. I should tell you where we are, shouldn't I, really? This is called Porcupine Hills. We're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and this particular road is Skyline Road. It runs be between, in the mountains, it runs between um, uh, sort of Pincher Creek, really, I suppose, and, and Clairesham. And a, you can actually carry straight on here, which is very nice. And there's a bunch of little campery campers here and doing winter camping and, and whatever, um, which actually looks very pleasant. Anyway, uh, so it's been a very interesting day, really, in terms of looking at Richard's performance on his. And I think the biggest notice, the biggest, the biggest thing I've noticed with Richard's is not the tyre grip, although it has it, but the biggest thing I've noticed with Richard's is his ability to keep a steady progressive throttle response in an appropriate manner and this doesn't do it can't do it uh, it's either revving up to 3500 4000 rpm or or it's sucking the power from you i've literally got it shoved in s3 now uh, manual three because i can't trust it in automatic uh, i i have tried it for the first half of the day i tried it in automatic and it was in first and in third and in second and in third and in fourth and changing gear it was all over the place uh, and didn't matter what TRS mode I had it in. I had it in configurable TRS, which locks everything up. I've set it to lock everything up and give me a little bit of wheel spin. Um, but that didn't, and, and automatic, sort of, you know, automatic gear changing. And that didn't help either. It was still all over the place, uh, pulling that power from me. And it seems like, I mean, you can lock it in a gear, but if, when you climb a bank, if you put it in second, it still pulls the power from you somewhere along the line and i don't know why like the dsc is off it's locked in a gear it shouldn't be dragging that power from me i should have complete response from the from the transmission and complete response from the engine uh, that when i put my foot into the throttle it does what i say rather than whatever it feels like and that's it's very very quite shady i'm a bit bothering me really so i am uh, i've just had a word with richard about swapping to the d5 well, what does reckon, Richard? I got it with a leg up in there, and it went up. I mean, I know that's not out like what we were up to the other day, but it was very smooth that way up. 
it felt a lot better too like more control with that diesel it felt less jerky and twitchy and underneath it's got it's fairly hardcore you know underneath even for a bit of a car not like Land Rover though is it? not like that Defender must have somewhat about it though because they, they give it some don't they and things and he says well you know they're, they're a little bit more of a primitive platform and they're not as well built in terms of strength and rigidity as the D as this Defender and of course I do end up with that roof rack drama that's that's a, a bit of a major issue to me um, but um, uh, but I, you know what I, I don't have the issues with the I don't have the issues with the um, the power being sucked away and it responds appropriately in snow you know you, you have that very smooth and progressive throttle control that's just missing off the off the I'm in grass gravel and snow mode here but you can see how we're all over the place there's the car just wants to do whatever it wants I'm in hill descent control there because of course I wanted to not end up in a ditch and it has the hill descent control does work very well but uh, it's still it's still all over the place it still wants to cut that engine and cut the power and, and then stick the brakes on when it feels like it and Sometimes you want them on, sometimes you want it to do what it wants to do, and then other times you really don't. Uh, and there seems to be no way of fooling him. I was talking to Richard about, he said that his early, very basic TRS-1, which he had in the, the LR3, uh, he got used to it. And um, when his son bought the LR2, uh, 2010 LR2 with... Zach, that is, when Zach bought the LR2, it had the TRS, the later, later generation TRS, and it was a far different system. It worked completely different. It was di differently tuned to the car, obviously, and, and Richard's car is the sport, and, and it's tuned differently. So it seems like Richard's has been very nicely tuned to his car, his TRS, and it was the case that, that Zach's LR2 was very nicely tuned to his case as well, his vehicle as well, but it seems that this TRS2, uh, on the on the new Defender is, is not tuned well to the P400. It seems that there's things missing. I don't know whether it's software to control the throttle or software to control the torque curves or uh, whether the the engine mapping's all wrong when you're in when you're in sort of some of the terrain modes. But it's it's basically a bloody nightmare and a liability is what it is in this sort of condition. And you don't want that, do you, with the Defender? You won't be able to jump in it and say best car on the road this I can drive over anything I won't be able to go and keep going and not have to worry about it but like my experience with the Defender is that that's not the case it's exactly the opposite that was the case with the L322 it's certainly the case with Richard Sport which you'll see from the videos as I'm talking is performing very nicely but not the case with the Defender the Defender's all over the place it's skittish it's no idea what he's doing it's out of control and when you want it to be in control you can't you can't rein it in it's just doing there's no way of just calming <laughs> nearly swore then there's no way of calming it down you just can't chill it out it's just it's just nuts we said to richard back there i said i was going to find a set of dura tracks like his and i'm going to sweat them on i think before i change vehicles but it's entirely likely uh, the, uh, I'll be moving to the D5 now. I've been seeing today's performance because it's bloody dangerous, to be honest. I mean, I've got I've got 30 years of off-road driving experience. I'm like, a, I'm not. This isn't my first rodeo, is it? I've trialed in the Great Britain and RTV Championships and and won. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good at this, uh, and I can't make this defender work right now Richard did mention that because we are gentlemen of a certain age it's possible that we're trying to make it drive like our Range Rover classics I suppose maybe that's what we're trying to do and maybe we do need to learn some adaptations and certainly we're we're learning I suppose about letting the wheels spin to engage the traction control and that sort of thing but on these terrains here as you can see here it doesn't matter how many wheels spinning you've got because you've got you know traction's hard so not hard but you don't have much traction so the the, the issue is you've got to you've got to make it be nimble and be responsive and be focused and be 
and do what you tell it to because the traction itself is reduced and, and if you spin a wheel it's all over it's too late um, and I think that's the problem now I've also driven my L322 in conditions like this and I have not complained about the L322 because I haven't experienced the issues that I've experienced and the L322 had the same tyres so it's not a tyre thing in those circumstances. I've driven hundreds of miles with the L322 in snowy roads like this to cut trees down at Christmas and, uh, and not had any other dramas. So this is a very different experience and certainly we're dragging some vestigial off-roading practices and some you know, sort of muscle memory from the Range Rover Classics and our classic defenders. We're, we're dragging that into the, the techniques we use here and perhaps improperly, but nevertheless, this doesn't behave like the L322 and it doesn't behave like Richard's L320 and my L322 had the same tyres so I don't know that it's just a tyre matter Richard said earlier on he said it's probably like some of it's the tyres but some of it's the car and what we need to do is figure out how to make the car stop messing about stop, stop with all this power sucking and, and revving and uh, lots of progressiveness you know that, that's what we need to do on this terrain it needs to be responsive it needs to do what it's told it doesn't need to do what it thinks is right um, and I'm wondering whether the D5 is a bit more like that because the, I mean if you look at uh, there's a chap on shout out here to after the Land Rover experience who's a mon who has a, a D5 down in America somewhere he's got um, fancy white 2017 V6 petrol and uh, he's got a buddy with a black one, I don't know who that is, but uh, he does some tremendous videos uh, of, of rock crawls and things like that and, and Moab sort of Texas territory or wherever he's from and uh, looks great so the D5s really do the do the biscuit, you know um, but uh, you know, but I, for me it seems like that, you know, well the D, like is after the Land Rover experience is where I'm going with this, his, his D5 is petrol and he does not have the same issues that I did with power sucking and they don't have it with the, the they certainly don't have it with the diesel because I've driven it, so, ooh, bloody hell, that was close did you see, um, so, uh, that's part of the problem, uh, like they don't have that experience and we do, so what's going on? Where's the, what? What's the story here? Why is it that we're having this issue and he's not? Why are we all over the spot and he's not? Why? Why is the power sack sucking happening on our vehicle and he doesn't have that issue? Why is that? Now I've moved to a bit of an older video here uh, just to give you something to look at because it's, it's very pretty here. But the engine uh, and the and the spinning out didn't actually turn out to be. Um, the biggest issue of the day oddly enough um, we did progress down a bit of uh, down this trail and, and we found a little a little hill a little bank uh, the side of the uh, sort of the path there that wasn't uh, fully covered in snow and it still had some grass poking through and and so we tried to create or recreate the video the YouTube channel all new Defender off-road created which was that little a uh, bit of a, a shallow bank rise, um, and, uh, and and we we had limited success really. Richard struggled to get up it, but did manage uh, with his tyres, and uh, and I had to go uh, both before Richard very gently, almost taking the same type of approach that uh, the all new Defender Off Road Channel did, which was a very steady and progressive sort of approach with a slight turn in to get one of the wheels to cross axle at the back um, and failed the first time and uh, had another go after Richard did uh, to get a little bit further up to get sort of sort of crested on on the breakover angle as it were and although I didn't really bottom out uh, on 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 the breakover angle that wasn't the issue I did sort of run out of traction because the bank was a bit slippy um, Anyway, just shortly after that, uh, I backed off the throttle and, and the car threw itself uh, into uh, gearbox fault detected mode, uh, which sort of stuck me in park, <laughs> kind of stuck on the bank a bit. Um, uh, 
and uh, wouldn't come out basically we tried to reset and, and, and switched it off and locked it and did some other bits and bobs uh, but to no avail now fortunately I did carry and I do carry with me that gap to ID tool um, and, and was able with that tool to, to log into the sort of a very basic fault code reader mode and, uh, and clear the code which was able to engage the gear again and no further issues were had but obviously my aggressive uh, climb had thrown it into into fault mode now i've climbed banks before uh with older land rovers as i've, I've mentioned earlier on in the video um there were lots of different times with the big defender older classic defenders and bigger range rovers and all sorts of things and even range rover classics and i've never really had uh, I've never really had a gearbox fault in that sort of. I mean, some of them were manual, of course, and they don't <laughs> they don't have any problems. <laughs> they no no faults to have there. It either turns or it doesn't. But um, the uh, the ZF8 speed did kick out this uh, fault code, and I've no idea what it was uh, that was registered because, the, of course, the I didn't even take a photograph of it because the gap tool so just just said unknown code with no number and so it wasn't even able to diagnose the sort of fault error code that it did throw uh, but fortunately it was able to clear it and it stayed cleared so that was re that was sort of reassuring um, but it also sort of suggested to the pair of us that even with these uh, newer defenders there is some basic limited sort of get you home and get you out of jail uh, free card thing that was uh, possible via the the gap tool um and both richard and i said on the way home you know if we if we hadn't to got that or i mean richard had one as well but if i hadn't to got mine i'd have still been sat there waiting for somebody coming to the mountain and tow me down the bank um, so not not very good all round uh I still don't know why i mean i was certainly giving it some beans but i, I don't really consider you know that i should have been having viewed the videos of the the fellas in uh, the desert and the dunes and giving them some beans up the up the dunes and doing all that kind of stuff and the amount of aggression that that fella in africa uh, launched on the vehicle when he tried to tow that arctic that whatever it was arctic in africa um up that bank and, and you know they had a couple going then uh, both of those were using far more ge far more beans than i was giving it so i don't know that i was doing anything more or less than the vehicle was capable of anyway whatever i was doing it, it didn't like it um and so that was sort of it really i mean the open shot of the day was we had a grand day out and as you can see from the scenery it was extremely pretty and very nice and it wasn't very cold either it was only about minus two or something like that so uh, we could you know had a, a chat outside and some beef jerky and and sort of thought about what was going on and thought had tried a few different things and and it was a grand day really but it's clear we've got a big learning curve uh, now i said earlier on in the video that uh, part of part of my concern was the tires uh, and it remains part of my concern uh, and so what i've done today is i've purchased some uh, some dura tracks with about two thousand miles of wear on them and uh, and we shall compare them to the the AT3s that I've got on and hopefully Richard and I can hit the trails again uh, to try and find uh, you know a bit more something to do I suppose and, and see uh, if we can compare apples for apples and that's by using the same sort of tyres now Richard's are a bit newer than that I mean he's not got 4,000 kilometres on his but um, but mine have got 13,000 mile on mine I think so something like that so there's a big difference there I suppose in terms of cutting edges and all that kind of thing anyway they'll be a bit more evenly matched but you can see from a couple of the photos that are coming up here that although Richard's tyres were picking up snow uh, you know when snow on snow gives you the traction mine were as well the AT3s were collecting the, tire, the snow and they both are uh, they both are uh, three peak mountain snowflake rated uh, tires so they should be at least meeting a minimum level of standard um, which one of them may exceed I suppose um, to uh, in, in snow and ice performance but anyway there you go thank you very much for tuning in yet again to one of my ramblings anyway uh, that's all we've got time for as I've said before uh, thank you for tuning in uh, and uh, that remains for me to say it's good night from me and it's good night from Finn <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheerio!